Hi, I am so glad you could join me today. We're going to be talking about Avogadro's number and using it mathematically as a conversion factor. And so we're focusing at least initially on moving between moles and a count of particles, either atoms or formula units or molecules. Now, eventually we're going to be doing two steps, but for now we're going to zero in on that count and using Avogadro's number. So in our first math equation, what we have is a question of how many question mark atoms, an atom is a particle that can be counted, are the equivalent of 4.20 moles of antimony, Sb. So uh, that's a one step. So we have atoms and it's asking us to go to moles. That's a one step uh, math problem. Now you may want to do this as proportionalities. That is certainly mathematically reasonable. I have my kids do it using dimensional analysis because we're moving very quickly to where we're going to have multi-step problems and proportionalities take a lot more time. It's a lot more writing. Uh, than if you're doing uh, dimensional analysis. So we're going to set this up. I've got moles in my numerator, so I want to put moles in my denominator so they'll cancel. I want atoms. The atom is the particle, so that's where you're going to put Avogadro's number, by the particle, not by the mole. The number one goes by the mole. When you're converting from a mole to one of these other units, the number one goes there. There's you know, going to be exceptions to the number one going by the mole, but for a while, um, the one is gonna to go to the mole whenever you're going from mass or to a count of particles. And so now moles cancel. And if I did my algebra right, plug it into that calculator, always, always check work, 10 to the 23rd, atoms, make sure you include a complete answer, atoms of antimony, and I did that to three, which happens to kind of be the most common number of significant figures. Okay, now notice we are counting. An atom is something that you can count. When you are counting, you use Avogadro's number. You can do this. All right, let's try another one. This one is formula units. So question mark, if you don't want to write out the whole thing, question mark formula units are equal to 7.63 moles. A formula unit is a count, and so this is one step, 7.63 moles of sodium sulfate, and Let's see if I can get a red line here. You can also do it, you know, using the lines. Some people like this railroad approach. It can streamline things. I have moles in my numerator. I want moles in my denominator. I want to go to formula units. The formula unit is the particle that you can count. And so that's where you want to put your 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, one mole. And the answer that I got is, whoops, 4.59 times 10 to the 24th formula units. Now, be really careful. I just got back from grading the AP test. And I was really surprised by how many students forgot to bring that times 10 to the 24th down from their calculator. They're in a hurry, they're tired, and they just grabbed that 4.59 and forgot the exponent. Well, that times 10 to the 24th is really, really important. Magnitude is a very valuable part. It's not part of the significant figures in terms of measurement, but that doesn't mean it's not an important part of the number. So don't forget to put that. All right, 
This next one, how many moles are in 9.1 times 10 to the 26th? So molecules to moles is a one-step problem. So I like to use MLCL for molecules. All right, make the grid. I want to get rid of molecules and I want to go to moles. Which one of these are you counting? You count molecules, not moles. And so that is where our 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd goes per one mole. Okay. The other thing you can consider is you're not typically going to be taking a huge power and multiplying it by a huge power. That might help you make sure you set these up, make sure units cancel. And in this case, I get 1.5 times 10 to the third moles of water. Two sig figs in my given, two sig figs in my answer. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this next one. This is iron. This time, we're going to do two steps. All right, we're going to merge two together. So we've got 10.20 grams, and I want to know how many atoms that is. Well, we're going from weighing to counting. And to do that, you really need to go through that heart of chemistry. I like to do things very linearly in multiple steps because I avoid making errors that way. So we've got 10.20 grams. Let's go ahead and get our grid here. This is going to be a two-step problem. So I'm first going to go from mass to moles. Mass to moles, use molar mass. I want grams to cancel. And I'm going to moles, so they're in the numerator. And for iron, one gram of iron is, or one mole of iron is 55.85 grams of iron. So now grams of iron cancel. If I stopped my math, I'd have moles of iron. But I can't stop my math because the question asks me how many atoms are present. So now I have to eliminate moles and go to atoms. Okay, now if you, let's see if I can find a good color, find the one you can count. The atom is what we count. And so that's where Avogadro's number is going to go, is by the particle that you can count. And the one goes by the mole, All right? And if I do that math, I get 1.099 for sig figs because my given was four sig figs. Don't forget that magnitude. You'll need that from your calculator. Atoms of iron. You want a complete answer there. All right, this next one is also a two-step because we're going from formula units, counting, to weighing. To go from counting to weighing, we have to go through the heart of chemistry or the mole. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with my formula units. And I'm going to make a grid. I, I don't know why I, I tend to like this. It, it streamlines my problems. Okay, So I want to get rid of formula units and go to moles. The formula unit is what we can count. So that's where we will put Avogadro's number one mole. Okay. Now I need to go to mass for magnesium chloride. So I want to get rid of moles and I want to go to mass. Mass to moles, use molar mass for every one mole. And you look at the periodic table, you add up one magnesiums and two chlorines, and you should get a molar mass of 95. 0.21. 
tell you a trick if you're at home working on homework and you get tired of calculating molar mass and you're sure you know how to do it, you can Google that. Just plug that right into Google, molar mass magnesium chloride, and it'll pop right up. Usually a Wikipedia site. I happen to like Wikipedia. Shh, don't tell your teacher. Okay, 9.88 times 10 to the third grams, three sig figs. Okay, so we did a lot in this video. If you need more help with that, you can rewind the video and watch it again. Uh, I hope you have really good luck with this in your chemistry class. Thanks for watching.